Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel where we are going to continue to build out some plugins for the art engine and today is our last plugin that we're going to be building and that is going to be an exporter plugin. If you feel a bit lost, don't worry, you can go ahead and watch the videos in this playlist. So just to recap what we did previously is we started building out these plugins and first we focused on a inputs plugin and then a generators plugin and a renderers plugin. And today we will be doing the last plugin, the exporter. And if you remember correctly, the current configuration is built to take in a list of words like so and then it runs it through the inputs which generates this data the generators then takes this and kind of mutates the data so that we can get a set of phrases and then the renderers make sure that we take these phrases and save it in a temp folder so this is where we are today in the last step of producing a fake seed phrase remember you cannot use these seed phrases um, but this is our last step. So carrying on, we can now go to the exporters folder. There's an examples folder over here, example file, which we are going to now take uh, and reuse. But let's go ahead and clear this out. So we start off with a blank slate. Now, like all the other plugins before, the exporter plugin also implements its own interface called the exporter interface. The only difference is is that the exporter interface is not generic and it can export any type it wants. So if we take a look at this, it also has an init function and an export function, but you can return anything you want to. For the props, we get a seed, the output path and the renderers getter. This is the prop that we'll use to get the output from the renderers. Before we go ahead and code the plugin, what are we expecting? Well, at the end of the day, we would like to have an output folder where our individual seed phrase files are stored. We want to make use whatever the renderers exported. And as we can see, it's this. And we have two options. We can either use the data directly uh, in the content section over here, or we can read the file from path. Now I'm going to take the path route because this is most likely the scenario that people will encounter. However, it could be much more easier just to get it from here. However, let's go ahead and code our very last plugin. Let's start off by renaming our plugin. And instead of saying example exporter, maybe we can call this our seed uh, phrase exporter. We can then go ahead and rename this as well to be our seed phrase exporter and uh, this will just have this no generic so this is perfectly fine so let's cover what's in the file currently at the very top we have our path and fs module imports which we'll use to export our files like before we also get our interfaces and then we also see the items data manager this time the items data manager will be used by passing in this get renders to get access to the previous values from the renderers. And then we also have the item properties interface, which we'll use later on. For the two private variables, we have our renderers getter and the output path, which both uh, is initialized in the init function via our props. And always keep in mind that we do get the seed as well, and you can use it however you want to, throughout your plugins. Most of the magic is going to happen in the export function. But before we can see it in action, let's head over to the index.ts file. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say we need a new uh, seed phrase exporter. And now that we have this, we can actually go back in here. And I would always like to uh, console.log out some of the values so i'm going to say this dot render getter and i want to actually see what values we get when we run the art engine so let's go ahead and do so and we can see this is what we have uh, to use we have the kind which is phrase renderer v1 and we know that the data in here looks like this which we're going to make use of the path 
pretty soon. Okay, so we can go ahead and code. Let's get rid of this log. And the first thing I wanna do is actually make sure that the output path exists. So we're gonna say fx exist sync, and we wanna check this dot output path to make sure that this path is there. If it's not there, we're going to say fs, and then we're going to make the sync like before. So let's go ahead and create this output path. So now we can go ahead and loop over the renders get us values, the values from the renderer. And in the previous video, I showed you how to do this, where we can actually use the key and value. So this will be renders of, and then we can loop over the values like so by using these uh, entries. And the entries that we want to check is the value from this. Now there's an underscore here, and that's because we're not going to make use of the key. Um, we might, but for now, we will see. The next step is for us to find the relevant data by kind, and if we find that data, then we can make use of it. So we're going to say phrase data and path is equal to, now we're going to say our renders, and we need to specify this as the items interface, and this will be maybe of kind any, like so. This is just to satisfy TypeScript. Then we'll say find. And what we will find is a render. And this render will be found in a way. I just want to give this a type as well. So we're going to say this will be of type items properties interface. And this is any as well, but this is a single uh, object. Now, what can we find or what do we need to search for? The thing we want to look for is actually in the previous plugin. And that is the kind of the data of the previous plugin. So we can check if there is a match of this kind of data and it's equal to this render.kind. If this is the case, we know that we have uh, data in here that we are able to use, right? It's eligible for us to use in a way. So now that we have this, we can just make sure that this data exists by putting in an if statement. And if it doesn't, then we can simply skip over whatever is in here. Now that we have the data, we can go ahead and read that file from that path. So we can say fs.read, and this will be file sync. And we now going to say that we want to read the phrase data and path dot data dot path because that's how it was stored. So now that we have this, we're going to read this file. Next, we can also get the data in a JSON format. So we can say JSON dot pass. And then let's pass it in this file content. We have a tiny error and that is because this is type of buffer and we actually need to pass this a string. So when we read our data, let's pass in UTF-8, like so. And that should fix our error. So now we should have our JSON data in here. Now before we carry on, we need to think about what's the name of the file going to be that we want to store. And I think it would be pretty cool if we create some hash of this file content and make that the name of the actual file. To create a hash for our file name, what we can do is here at the top, let's import create hash uh, from crypto. So recently crypto is now native in Node.js, I believe. So we can create a hash by saying uh, create hash. And then we want to specify the type of hash. And this time it would be MD5, like so. We're going to say that this needs to update and be the file content. Then we're going to say the digest should be hex. And that should give us a hash. Now the last thing we can For the second parameter, 
we're going to say json.stringify and what we want to stringify is the actual data. So we want to say data null and two. This way it will format this very nicely and our plugin is now complete. So yes, essentially we're not doing a lot with the export plugin. We're just simply saving the data with a new name uh, that is a hash of the content. However, you can play around with this. Let's now go ahead and test this whole system. I'm going to remove the entire cache folder. I can also close these off, make sure that's closed off. And let's see if there's an output folder. I'm going to remove that too. So now technically our system is up and running. And if we run this right now, it should create for us our seed phrases. There should be four created and the minimum length would be six. And then we're going to have five words in each phrase. So if we look at the output, there are the four files. They are JSON files. If we click on it, it has our phrase. It has a minimum length of six per word. And there's five words. And there you have it. Of course, you can take this even further. For example, uh, if the exporter, instead of having that word phrase in there, uh, what we could have done is said, instead of just writing this, write data.phrase. So if we run this now, uh, it will simply generate and we will get uh, just the words themselves in an array. And that might be a better format for you to consume. Whatever the case, you have now seen how to create an inputs plugin generator renderer and exporter. And I hope this video was informative and that you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments, like this video, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.